at the 2008 U.S. Sport Aviation Expo. We're uh, pleased to be able to get together with an old friend, a guy we've known, well, way too long, huh, Eric? Yeah, it's been a long time, Jim. <laughs> we're, uh, we're particularly pleased to be able to get with you because if there's a Rotax expert among the Rotax experts, you're it. If you would, tell me a little bit about, first, who you are, how you came to be here, and what you do for Rotax. Okay, well, um, I've been working with Rotax engines since, well, the late 60s. And I guess that tells my age. Oh, I started uh, racing snowmobiles back in 67 through the 70s and uh, got involved with the aircraft engine project in the early 80s with a uh, gentleman called Ron Shuttler out of Canada who was the North American distributor for the Rotax engines for aircraft projects. Originally started doing their warranty analysis and training programs, and I still do training programs through the Rotax Flying and Safety Club. Now, the engine development started real serious in the 80s, particularly with two strokes. In the mid 80s, we started going into four stroke engine development. And the four stroke series that we're going to talk about here is, uh, was kind of the accumulation of a lot of years of effort and work. And I've uh, been working with Rotax Factory as their liaison between Kodiak and the OEMs and service centers in the United States, Central, and South America. What do we got here? What does it do? Where is it for? Who's using it? How are they using it? And more important, give us the nitty gritty details. Okay, well, the engine we're looking at here is called a 914 turbo. And this particular engine is developed particularly for people who want to have really good max takeoff power. And if you have an altitude requirement, such as uh, anything you're dealing in Colorado or altitude, you want to go fast at altitude, this is what you need because it's turbocharged, uh, 115 HP of takeoff performance. And if you're using a constant speed prop, you can really make advantage of that. It is developed to be very user friendly. It has a complete electronic wastegate control system. So there's nothing to worry about or adjust. It's all automatic. The other thing is it's in a fail safe mode, which happens to be a very good thing for our ASTM standards and type certificate standards. This particular engine, if you go to a fail safe, you have a complete turbo failure, still will develop about 80 HP. So it uh, doesn't put you into a bad position. The things you want to think about here to make an engine lightweight and performance uh, minded you need to do something that's very special for aircraft and we have to go with gear reduction units mm -hmm. now that's a significant change from the direct drive units engines of the old times and that allows us to basically multiply torque in the engine an extremely good idea here we're dealing with short stroke 61 millimeter but it's also a fairly small bore only 79 and a half millimeter gives us 1211 cc's but we're uh, 115 HP uh, with 1,211 cc's is pretty good performance. Where you're going to find this engine is particularly high altitude aircraft. For example, we have a lot of people who build Europa Experimentals. Mm -hmm. They want to go up, go fast, and they want to get at altitude. Mm -hmm. uh, this engine's ideal for that. Uh, you're going to find this engine also, a derivative of it is also used quite extensively in a lot of unmanned aircraft drones. All the A-Series Predators have uh, Rotax 914 engines. And interestingly enough, uh, they've accumulated over 300,000 flight hours to date on Rotax-powered Predators. And uh, that's, that's a pretty, pretty amazing record with a very, very small uh, failure rate. And usually that's attributed to other things like mm, small arms fire and so on. But generally speaking, the engine's been very robust. Uh, we're very, very happy with it. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. Some interesting features uh, on this engine to look at. Obviously, it has a gear reduction unit that's integral to the aircraft. So prop speeds uh, takeoff are quite normal, 2,600 RPM takeoff performance uh, at the prop. We're talking about 55, 5,800 RPM crankshaft speed. But like your modern car, the RPM of the engine isn't really significant. It's what, what we're putting to the ground that's important. Um, extremely good power to weight ratio. Now, the carburetors, interestingly, it's a carbureted engine. and but we have extremely low CO emissions, which shows it's very, very fuel efficient. And uh, the, the engine itself is uh, dual capacitor ignition, which is common on all of our four-stroke series. And the ignition system is extremely good. It's uh, very 
um, easy to maintain. Other than uh, doing some checks at your annual condition inspections and a few periodic checks as you go through life, there's no requirement for any rework of the ignition. There's no mags to rebuild. Mm -hmm. Nothing you have to worry about in that function. So it's, uh, it's been very, very trouble free. The package you're looking at is really kind of unique because we supplied it as a, basically a drop-in package. Mm -hmm. The electronics are supplied with it, even an engine motor mount ring is supplied on it. All you have to do is attach to your firewall or your firewall ring. Now the gearbox is all integral, oil pump is fitted, the electrics you simply have to bolt them to the firewall and plug in your harness. You're pretty much ready to go. Inside the electronics it has a, uh, a data link you can connect to a PC. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how we sent, uh, set on the potentiometer, which is on this carburetor for the two four cylinder side, throttle potentiometer. So we set the throttle linkage, and that basically sets the whole system so you get the properly matched for the computer for synchronization. Very simple for a technician to plug into it. The sensors are very robust, they all have fail safe modes if something should fail, that the turbo doesn't cease to work, it just goes into a fail safe position. Okay, we are cleared for our approach. Have our Garmin GPS set up to fly the LPV. And look, here comes the glide path. And you're probably wondering how we can intercept a glide path when there's no ILS on the field. Well, hey, that's the beauty of WASP GPS. No ILS, no localizer, no problem. WASP gives us full vertical guidance even without ground-based navigation. Okay, next you're probably wondering why there's spit all over your side of the windshield. That basically rounds out the 914 package. Um, well, well, you may think of it as an expensive package. People have to look at it as this is a complete drop-in engine. Engine mount, exhaust system, everything in electronics is all part of the package. We include with it two electric fuel pumps. We have a primary and auxiliary, and of course the dry sump turbo oil tank. Everything is supplied. Comes with all the paperwork and packaging. And the other thing about Rotex that's good is all the paperwork is downloadable mm -hmm. if you lose it or you want to update. So we don't. There's no extra charge to owners to do that. Well, I have to tell you, over the years we've flown a number of the 914s. They've been just tremendously hardy little engines, lots of power. And the best part is when it comes time to fuel them up, <laughs> sticker shock isn't that big a deal. Well, that's a big deal right now with the price of fuels and. That's been one of the biggest successes in the light sport aircraft is the fact that this engine is something you can operate reasonably and your expenses aren't too high. Um, overall times, we've got this engine, a particular one on the 914 turbo is 1,200 hours, which is pretty good for a high performance engine and turbocharged. Generally, turbocharged engines are much less, but in this case, it's only marginally less than the, its uh, four-stroke cousins, which are at 1,500 hours. Well, there you have it, folks. This is the big brother to the Rotax 900 series, the 914, turbocharged, and an engine that'll get you just about anywhere you need to go, no matter how high or, in many cases, when you just need that little bit of extra oomph on takeoff, the Rotax 914. Eric, thanks. Thank you, Jim.